speak to George K. Arthur for just a few minutes, and it becomes clear that he has a lot of friends. A friend of mine, God rest his soul, uh, noted all over, a gentleman by name. So a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, said he wanted to run for district committee person. A friend of mine, we worked together at the then the Railway Express Agency. He was a blues singer, very popular in the area, a very good friend of mine. And I had him down at the headquarters. He's helped a few friends out here and there. I was doing a guy a favor. He also has a few friends in high places. Because I had contacts in Washington and everything else. George has had a prolific political career in Buffalo and beyond. In some shape or form, he's been part of Buffalo's political scene since 1957 and even became the president of Buffalo's Common Council from 1984 until he retired in 96. We're now in what is known as the Ellicott District, and this is the um, Fifth Ward. I like to refer to as the cradle of the um, black community in Buffalo and in western New York. You know, matter of fact, just... I use that word retired in air quotes. I know, they're annoying, but in this case, they're necessary. George is still hugely active in the community. He was a part of the team that worked to preserve the Nash House Museum, which was the family home of the Baptist minister, Reverend J. Edward Nash Sr. Reverend Nash was the pastor of the Michigan Avenue Baptist Church from 1892 until 1953. George is giving me a tour. This is this amazes a lot of kids. I was just about to say this is when they, huge. When they, when they see this, you know the old Victrola, and I show them the sound is regulated by the doors. Well, now, well, the doors. Also during his so-called retirement, George made it to New York State's Electoral College in 2008, the year President Obama was first elected. Yep. Those are some of the friends in high places I was telling you about. Were they hers? Go to her hats and uh, see, she is there's the wife of a Baptist minister. She had to wear a different hat every day. I mean, every Sunday. One of George's first forays into politics was when he got elected to the Erie County Board of Supervisors in 1964. So what made him decide to run? What started it all? Well, he was just doing a friend a favour. My friend said that he wanted to run for Ellicott District Council member, and he wanted me to run with him. So I said, well, fine, I'll, I'll run with you. I don't have any money, but I'll run with you. This is Lifted by Rise Collaborative, a podcast profiling people and perspectives in a community in modern America. More after this. This episode of Lifted is brought to you by Tipico Coffee Roasters. Located at 128 Fargo Avenue, just south of DeUville College, Tipico strives to bring the highest quality coffee to you every single day. They roast and pack on the west side and deliver to their cafe and places all around town every single week. Whether you're looking for an exciting coffee from a single farm in the southern slopes of the Andes Mountains, Colombia, or something with a little more roast and approachability, Tipico has a slew of offerings roasted weekly to please your palate. Follow along with them on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Tipico Coffee. That's T-I-P-I-C-O Coffee. And remember to stop by on your way to work to try their commuter menu from 6am until 9am. It's loaded with lots of goodies to get your day started right. George K. Arthur's long political career was kicked into gear because he agreed to do a friend a favour. George's friend was running for Ellicott District Council member and asked George to run for a separate position alongside him, the supervisor of the Fifth Ward. George said yes to that favour. He wanted his friend to have a team. But George had hardly any funds for his campaign. He was going to have to get creative to get noticed. So he called in a favour of his own, from a work buddy. He had a very small merry-go-round. And what he used to do was he would take his merry-go-round and go in the blocks. So what I did was I hired him. Of course, he gave me a discount because of our relationship. That's right, mates rates. 
Equipped with his campaign handcards, George and his work buddy would take this merry-go-round through the neighbourhood two or three times a week, giving kids a free ride. And we'd stop in the middle of the block, turn on the music, turn on the merry-go-round, and all the kids come running because they're going to get a free ride. And, and that gave me a lot of joy. Plus, it got me known. As the campaign went on, George was becoming more familiar to the community. He noticed that each time he went out with the merry-go-round, he was speaking to more and more potential voters, the parents of the children. People would hear that music, they'd follow it. You know, it was like, you, you know, when you talk about the Pied Piper and all the other, hey, it works. <laughs> Let me tell you, it works. And that's, that was the thing, there's no question in my mind, that's the thing that tipped it. And George won. He'd opened the door to his serious political career. And the friend that asked him to run in the first place? He lost and I won. And that was in, in 1963 and then 19, January 1, 1964. I became the supervisor of the Fifth Ward. Well, that's democracy, I suppose. On his first day in his new job, George was thrown right in. He was expected to cast his vote over different items and proposals. You know, political stuff. And he was ready. There was work to be done. But when he met with his superior before the votes, he was surprised to find... He had the agenda all set for us. He went over, got the agenda for everybody, marked them all. George was confused. And I said, no, 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 hold on. This isn't the way it goes. I haven't read these items. You don't have to read them. You just vote. That's all. His expectations didn't match up to reality. I'd seen these movies and all the rest where the politicians get up and make these beautiful speeches and everything. It didn't happen that way. Nobody listened to me. So to get through, George did what got him into politics in the first place. I began to make some friends and learn some different things that was going on and how the game was really played. This was the code breaker. Relationships. Being sociable, making friends. OK, so some of those friendships in George's political career may have been different from the kind of friendship he had with the buddy who asked him to run or the work friend that gave him a discount on the merry-go-round. But their friendship's all the same. And George says they helped him to understand the system. That was my learning process. While we learned one thing in school, but in the real world, it was a whole <laughs> There wasn't written about it in those, those textbooks. We would all like government to um, would snap our fingers. It has to change overnight. It doesn't happen that way. And there's a reason for it. And you talk about that whole system of checks and balances. The system of checks and balances takes time. I think that the thing in tempering down and taking a look is that you also you have to understand the other person's position. And if there is there a, a difference or, or a similarity between you and them, and if it is, what is a happy medium? And, and you can see it happening today in, in Congress and all the rest of it. The art of compromise is a thing of the past. Yep, George learned the art of compromise. He realised that he could be listened to, but he had to slow down and listen to others if he wanted to get stuff done. So... What would the George K. Arthur of January 1st, 1964, make of that attitude, I wonder? That's a good question. I think he would think I was an old, uh, uh, broken down, uh, conservative, not aggressive enough, and he called me an Uncle Tom. Because that's what I did to some of those older folks. And the reason for that is the lack of experience and know-how. You've been listening to Lifted. Thanks to Typico Coffee Roasters for sponsoring this episode. This podcast is produced by me, Holly Kirkpatrick, for Rise Collaborative. 
You can find out more about Rise and what they do by visiting their website, risecollaborative.com, or just give them a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Lifted is a weekly podcast, so keep an ear out for more episodes. You'll be able to find them wherever you found this.